Hey! Happy day 12 of Pride Month. Um, I was thinking we should really come up with a song. Uh, on the 12th day of Pride Month, my true love gave to me. I gave Dolce a boost in her blue in her top she knot did. today. <laughs> Still thinking we probably have to go for professional help post-pandemic because I'm just not a hairdresser. Ah, I think it's a good thing. I did the best I could. <laughs> it looks really cute. <laughs> it's a cool color. Um, so today, it's been, well, I keep repeating the same things. It's been a heavy week. It's been a heavy um, month, a series of months. But today in particular, um, it's the anniversary of the Pulse Massacre. And um, there have been a number of transgender women or people actually of color, um, mostly women, who've been murdered uh, over the past month and uh, some this week. We had um, Rhea Milton and Nina Pop, excuse me, Remy Fells, who were both killed this week. There was a woman um, named Nina Pop um, who was murdered um, in Missouri, only a couple of hours from where we are. Um, a person named Liana Dior and a man named Tony McDade, all um, murdered uh, within this last few weeks. So there's um, a lot of sorrowing to do. And um, the theme of our today's um, reading and, and kind of discussion, still coming from Transfigured, uh, still pertains to uh, transgender people in a particular way. Um, but also applies to all of us more generally. Mm. Uh, so Diane's going to read um, the scripture today out of the message, um, which is always enlightening, an enlightening translation. So. <laughs> you ready for that? Yeah. Okay, today's reading comes from 1 Corinthians 15. You will notice that the variety of bodies is stunning. Just as there are different kinds of seeds, there are different kinds of bodies humans, animals, birds, fish, etc. Unprecedented in its form. You get a hint at the diversity of resurrection, resurrection glory. I'm sorry because what is really happening when you go live is like if your tablet fades out, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. And it just you have did. To tap quick. So I'll, I'll, I'll start back at that last sentence. <laughs> you get a hint at the diversity of resurrection glory by looking at the diversity of bodies not only on earth, but in the skies, sun, moon, stars, all these varieties of beauty and brightness. And we're only looking at the pre-resurrection seeds. Who can imagine what the resurrection plants will be like? This image of planting a dead seed and raising a living plant is a mere sketch at best, but perhaps it will help in approaching the mystery of the resurrection body. But only if you keep in mind that when we're raised, we're raised for good, alive forever. The corpse that's planted is no beauty, but when it's raised, it's glorious. Put in the ground weak, it comes up powerful. The seed sown is natural, the seed grown is supernatural. Same seed, same body, but what a difference from when it goes down in physical mortality to when it is raised up in spiritual immortality. Hmm. Fundamentalist Christians seem to be obsessed with bodies, whether it's demanding who shouldn't have sex with whom or proclaiming what body parts equate to what gender descriptor. Scripture tells us we are made in God's likeness, therefore our bodies must be a reflection of God in some mystical way. So while many people like to think our bodies are meaningless in the eyes of God and for our eternal future, that doesn't seem right. Today's words from Paul point out the gorgeous diversity of the bodies God created, all of which are matter presented in different forms. Matter is nothing but elaborate arrangements of energy manifesting itself in an astonishing array of shapes and sizes. All the shapes are beautiful, from the tiniest, tiniest bacterium to the most incandescent expanding star. They are all also all perishable, destined to lose their current form. But while shapes persist, excuse me, but while shapes perish, the energy which comprises those shapes remains. This is an awe-inspiring reality. Hmm. In Romans, Paul tells us we are all one, bo one body in Christ. Jesus is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and through him all things were made, including you and I. We are all made of the same stuff, the glorious energy God created through their ecstatic Big Bang. 
you and I and the person who tormented you for wearing clothes they thought belonged on someone else. We are all the flesh of Jesus himself, all bearer beings of his spirit, the holy she. Our transitions and becomings are important to our manifestation of truth in our current energy configurations, our current bodies right now. But even though living our truth is important, remember that our current bodies are holy magnificence which will perish in their current forms so they can transcend and become even more fully the splendor of Christ. The glorious splendid best is yet to come for you, beloved manifestation of God. So with all of this uh, reminder of death, actuality of death that is, seems to be permeating our um, present, I loved this promise of hope and this, this reality. It's not a platitude. It's, um, it's not meant to be a platitude and the reality of it isn't a platitude. You know, this energy that we um, that's manifesting here now through my fingers and through the desk that's in front of me and through my beloved. Um, it's, it cannot die. It will not die. It transforms and becomes something new. And um, the deaths of all of these people um, who've been horribly uh, wronged and the lives of their families has been horribly wronged, their energy continues. Their matter continues. They, they continue to matter and their matter continues. Um, so those are some of the thoughts that I wanted to talk about. Did you have anything that you would want to add to that? I found myself rather speechless today, um, kind of just in a state of uh, sorrow, but also trying to enter into that next step past the grieving, past the emotional remembering and the sadness of what's going on to action and how can I act in that moment how do I love louder how do I make changes so I'm, I'm in the middle right there I'm still in all the pain of thinking about pulse and thinking about you know the Black Lives Matter situation in our country right now it's it's all horrific so how do I move beyond that so I'm kind of uh, though I had a bunch of words right there a little speechless and emotionally drained today yeah I, I it was kind of um lovely that it's loving day is that what it's it called is. the celebration of um interracial marriage becoming legal and um that is a a sign for us of hope for all of us for mm -hmm. you and for us um that change does happen that equality eventually does come about um that love wins mm -hmm. and um so that some of the things that are happening now uh, are making a difference and that the things that you do are making a difference and that you make a difference. Yeah. Whoops, there's Rumpelpin. <laughs> Apparently he thinks he needs to make a difference. I think my peanut butter bribes are losing their efficacy a little bit with these guys. Hmm. So um, remember that uh, we are all made from stardust and to stardust we will return. And that is amazing and glorious mm. Mm. it is indeed so peace be with you all we peace love you, with you and we will talk to you again you. tomorrow on day 13 ah see ya <laughs>